Algebra 2 students. Hope you're enjoying your break. We have a video lesson this week, so you know how to do the one assignment that you have. So let me put up here on my screen my camera so we can review this. All right, so this week's lesson is about piecewise function, piecewise. And I was like, piecewise, what an odd term, but it'll make sense here when you see what we're talking about. All right, so let's use this example here. So for a baseball player to score a run, you know, which is the baseball term for a point, they must move counterclockwise among four straight paths. They got to go from home plate to first base to second base to third base and back home. Right, so each side of the square path, called the baseball diamond, is 90 feet. Each one of those sides, 90 feet between each base. All right, that's true all the way around. 90 feet all the way around. All right, so when a baseball player is on first place, on first base, how far are they away from home plate? So if he's hit the ball and he's ran the first base, how far away is he? That's, that's easy, right? He's 90 feet because it's just a straight line. He just ran a straight line to first base. When a baseball player is on second base, how far are they from home plate? Well, your instinct might say, well, he's 180 feet. Well, no, that would be if he ran straight another 90. Out here would be 180 feet. But if you look at this, he has ran to first base, and then we've turned and made a 90-degree angle to run to second base. This is a 90-degree angle. So this distance is not 180 feet. If this is 90 and this is 90, what is that? Well, that is our old friend Pythagoras, who gave us the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem, which says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The longest side of a right triangle is always the c. So we know A is 90, and we know B is 90, and whatever they equal when you add them together is C squared. So let me put the calculator up here on the screen real quick. And so we'll say, okay, well, 90 squared is 8,100. So this would be 8,100 plus 8,100 equals c squared, so 16,200 is c squared, but we want to know just how far c is. How far is it from home to second base? So we have to take the square root, square root of both sides. So this would be c, because the square root of c squared would be c. So what is the square root of 16,200? 16,200, the square root will be 127.28 or so. So that's how many feet away, 127.28 feet. That's how far it is from home plate to second base. All right, let's look at our next question regarding this. Okay, this says create a table of values for the player's distance from home plate as they run around the bases. And let's assume that the player runs at a constant rate of speed of 10 feet per second. All right, 10 feet per second. And then we'll use the table of values to sketch the graph. So 0, 3, 6, 9, at 36 seconds, he should be all the way around the bases, right? Because 90, 90, 90, 90, he's ran 360 feet at 10 feet per second. That should take 36 seconds. So at 0 seconds, he's still right at home plate. Three seconds later, he's ran. 10 feet per second, 30 feet, he's ran 60 feet, he's ran 90 feet, and that was all in a straight line. And that was all in a straight line to first base, but now he turns. So when he's ran for 12 seconds, his distance from home plate is not 120, because now you've got a right triangle that's 90 by 30, because he's ran for 12 seconds, 90 by 30. 
So we've got to figure out what C is there with the Pythagorean theorem. 90 squared plus 30 squared equals C squared. All right, so in the, in the interest of time, I've already pre-calculated all this. This would be 94.87. And this would be 108.17. This one we've already calculated. That's what we did right here. Because at 18 seconds, he's ran 90 feet and 90 feet. That puts him on second base at 18 seconds. So that's this one, 127.28. All right, 127.28. Then at 21 seconds, he's actually getting closer again. All right. So then we would actually calculate this right triangle. Right, that right triangle right there, because he's getting closer again. So look at how, how long is that C? With this being at 21 seconds, he's ran three seconds towards third base, which means this is a distance of 60 now, right? So we've got 60 and 90, because he's ran 30 feet of the 90 feet. Again, I've already pre-calculated that. And that is the 108.17 because it matches the 15 seconds here. When he's three seconds away from second base here, almost there, it's the same triangle. This one's a 60 at that point. So we'll get the same triangle on the other side. And this one is the 94.87 at 27 seconds. That's nine seconds plus nine seconds plus nine seconds, right? He's standing on third base, so he's 90 feet away. After another three seconds, now he's only 60 feet away. And then he's only 30 feet away, and then he is at home plate. All right, so they want us to take this information now and put it on a graph in seconds. So let's see, at zero, he's at zero. At three, he's up at 30. They did these in threes for us. At six seconds, he's at 60. Nine seconds, he's at 90. Then he's at 94.87. So just about halfway. 108. Not quite to 110. 127 at 18. Back at 108. At 24 seconds, he's at the 94 again. And then over at the 90, 27 seconds. And then he's back at the 60, back at the 30, and back there. So if we graph this, this is, well, this part's a straight line right here from, from running from home base to third, I mean, the, the first and from third to home base, those are straight lines. These have a little bit of a uh, slope to them, a little curve to the slope. Not exactly straight like we saw with the other parts. Okay. So that's what the graph of this looks like. Explain why the scenario described above can be modeled with a function. Why is that a function? Well, for each X, there's only one Y. When you graph it, it passes the vertical line test. Passes the vertical line test. It's a function. Describe the input and output quantities. The input is the time, right? Input time. Output feet from home plate, feet from home. Okay, describe in words the shape of the graph. Be as specific as possible. Um, let's see, it kind of looks like a tent to me. Kind of looks like a tent. It's a uh, linear. And 
kind of uh, upward, maybe quadratic, maybe exponential, but it's upward curve. And then a downward curve. We don't know if it's exponential or anything. Downward curve. Then linear again. All right, it's got different shapes. And this is a positive linear. This one's a negative linear slope. Is it possible to write a single equation where the solutions would produce this graph? Can we do that? Can we write an equation for that? No. Not consistent. Some linear, some not. Right, we know for sure there's, there's, there's no way we could write an equation for that. Let's look at this. We could define this in pieces. Right, if we broke this up and said, okay, well, if I want to talk about this piece right here, right, I want to talk about that piece between zero and nine seconds, we could write an equation or something that would match that. And then say, if I want to talk about the part from nine to 18 seconds right there, this is one consistent graph. And then if we want to go 27 seconds, we could do that. And then finally, the last piece there, we could do something between 27 and 36, because that's linear. We could write an equation for that. So we could break it up into four different pieces. Starting to get the piecewise here, four different pieces. And it would look like this. Function, f of t, could be these four different pieces based on, oh, they didn't fill this in for us, the intervals of the domain's not been included. Based on what intervals? So at the beginning, when we're first starting out, this is linear, 10 times t for how many seconds? Six seconds is 60, three seconds is 30. It's 10 times the number of seconds. That's any time between zero and nine, right? Any time between zero and nine. And then starting at nine seconds, now notice this one is up into nine, but not including, it doesn't have the equals. So from nine, including nine seconds, because at nine seconds, they're actually on first base and they'll be hitting anything over that will be heading to second base. So up until we get to second base, which is at 18 seconds, right? Up to 18 seconds right there. This is the equation. And this is the Pythagorean theorem, but all is one, taking the square root of A squared plus, and to get B squared, you got to take 10 times how many seconds we ran more than nine, right? Because the first nine seconds are covered up here. The second nine seconds here. So if we run 10 seconds, that's, that's, that's one second towards second base from first. We would take 10 minus nine is one times 10. And so the 10 would be the number of seconds we ran, right? And so we would square that. So A squared plus we've ran 10 feet towards second base, 10 squared. And that would take the square root of that to give us that Pythagorean theorem to give us the distance of C. Now, the third section, when it, 18 seconds and above, all the way up to 27 seconds. And then here, when we hit 27 seconds all the way to 36, we would use this piece. So using four different pieces of four different functions, right? a different piece of four different functions, we can write a function that actually models this graph right here. This is the function for this graph. We just had to take pieces of four different functions to be able to do that. But this is called a piecewise function. And the important part of the piecewise function is when do you use which piece? It all matters right over here, right? Depends on what the time is. Whatever the time is, that tells you which piece to use. So a piecewise function will always have 
something over here that tells you when to use which piece. Okay, so let's look at the questions I have here. Suppose you want to determine the baseball player's distance from home plate 30 seconds after they begin running. Which piece of the function should we use? Well, 30 seconds, we know, okay, well, no, 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 right there. 30 would be between these two. So which piece would we use? We'd use this last piece right here because 30 is between writing's not looking real good there 27 and 36 because that's that's where 30's at 30's in between there so we use that piece all right so based on the function what is the player's distance from home plate 30 seconds all right so 30 seconds we got here negative 10 times 30 minus 36 30 because that's our time 30 30 minus 36 is negative 6. So negative 6 times negative 10 would be 60 feet. Ooh, that's 6, I didn't look at it. 60 feet. How's that compared to the value from our table? 30 seconds, 60 feet. Same. Okay. Suppose you want to determine the baseball player's distance from home plate 18 seconds. Oh, so which one do you use? Well, this one does not include 18. It's everything up to 18. This is one. So you would use this one here. Right? Use that one because that one is the one that includes 18 in the piecewise function. Now, for our purposes on this particular one, it's not going to matter because at 18, whether we're using this one or this one, they're both in the same place. That's not always the case. Sometimes they're different. So you have to understand when to use which piece of the function. So 18 seconds based on the function. 27 minus 18 is 9. 9 times 10 is 90. 90 squared plus 90 squared. So that's that original one that we calculated. That was 127.28 feet. All right, that's that's what that would calculate to, which is what we got the same as on our table. Same as the table. Suppose you want to determine the number of seconds after the baseball player begins running that they're 75 feet. How would we do that? Ah, you want to know when they're 75 feet away. Well, if we look at this, we know that zero to nine seconds running at 10 feet per second, that must match. We use the first piece. And how many seconds will he be 75 feet away? So we take it and say, okay, 75 equals, yeah, that's not a good five. Whoop. 75 equals in our equation. When does that equal that? Divide by 10. T equals 7.5 seconds. We just substitute, set the equation equal to the to the number of feet and solve it for the seconds. All right, so that is just an example of how a piecewise function would be used in the real world because this would not be one function, it would be four different functions that we can take pieces of to create that. So for your assignment this week, uh, it's going to give you some piecewise functions just written like this. And you're supposed to figure out the values based on what they're asking for. So we're going to do some examples. These are not from your assignment. These are some examples outside of your assignment. So let's look at what it's asking for. All right. So we got A, B, and C under number one. F of negative five. All right. So negative five is the X. So our function, our piecewise function says it's x squared minus one if, pay attention to the if, if x is less than negative two. Is our x less than negative two? Yes, it is. So we need to use that piece of the function. So x squared would be negative five squared minus one because 
we're substituting negative 5 in for the x. Negative 5 squared is 25 minus 1. So this equals 24. That's what f of negative 5 equals. How about f of negative 2? Oh, well, that's the breaking point. Which one do we use? We have to use this one because it has the equals. If x is greater than or equals to negative 2, which it's equal to negative 2, we use 5x plus 3. 5 times negative 2 plus 3. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 plus 3. So this equals 7. Notice if we use the wrong one, it's not going to equal 7. Because negative 2 squared is 4 minus 1. That'd be 3. So this is one where it's not the same. If you graphed it, if you graphed it whenever this made x squared, when it got it to where x is negative 2, this would have a hollow circle at 3. And then it would jump up to 7 and have a filled-in circle because it includes the 7. And it would you know go from there. But a hollow circle would be right up to negative 2, x equals negative 2, but don't include the negative 2. But then it jumps up there for the rest of the graph. f of 7, where's f of 7 going to fall? Well, it's not less than negative 2. It is greater than or equal to negative 2. So f of 7 would be 5 times 7 plus 3. So 35 plus 3, 38. 38. Okay, so that's what this week's assignment is about. Looking at the values they want and figuring out which piece of the piecewise you're going to use. Which piece of the piecewise. Let's look at one of these with a, with a graph real quick. It says graph each piecewise function and identify the domain and range. Okay, we always need to be able to do that. So if x is less than or equal to negative 3. So at this point here, x is less than or equal to negative 3. It'd be x. So we can make a little table if we want, but we know the y would equal the x. Anytime this is below negative 3, negative 5, negative 4, including negative 3. So this would be negative 5, negative 4, negative. They'd be the same because it says it equals x. f of x equals x. It equals the same thing. So if we go to negative 3, and we can graph that right there and negative 4 and negative 5, we see that this graph is going to go straight in that direction with a solid circle. But when it's greater than negative 3, okay, so when it's negative 2, negative 2x plus 1, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 plus 1. So negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1, that's going to equal 5. So at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's going to be way up here. And what happens at negative 1? Negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2 plus 1, so it's going to be 3. So here's at 3. But what is it when it's right at negative 3? It doesn't include it, but when it's at negative 3 on this equation, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 plus 1 is equal 7. So what we would put is at 7, we would put a hollow circle, and then the graph is going down 2 every time. It's got a slope of, slope of negative 2. So we have a hollow circle there and a filled-in circle here. So the domain, is there any x's on the graph? Are there any x's that are not included in this graph? Well, let's see. All x's this way are included. All x's that way are included. And this x where negative, negative 3 is included, it's included down here. Then it jumps up there. So all real numbers. You could also say from negative infinity to infinity. Either one of those, right? Either one of those. How about the range? What all possible y's? 
Well, this is going down, so it goes all the way to negative infinity. This is going down to negative infinity, but the highest it ever gets is right there at seven, but it does not include seven. So basically, the range is y is less than seven. Or you could say from negative infinity to seven with a parenthesis, not a bracket, because it's not included. Okay. All right. So that's looking at piecewise functions. There's more practice here. I'll go ahead and upload this if you want to do these extra practice problems. Uh, but the main thing is being able to look on a piecewise function. If you've given this is the function a of x, it's the absolute value of x minus 8. And you find that x is less than or equal to negative 6. It's 2x minus x squared if negative 6 is smaller than x, but x is still smaller or less than or equal to negative 1. So when it's between negative 6 and 1, you use this piece. And many times x is greater than negative 1, you use this piece. So here is 6 for you to use and figure out which of those pieces of that function would you use. So, all right. Got questions on that? Email me. But uh, hope you're enjoying your break. And this is your one assignment for the week.